right? If you're a great leader, you're gonna find a great team, right? I think so. You're gonna be out there hustling to find the best and the brightest who are gonna follow you. How many of you have built businesses here before, right? You've had to find the right people to build your team, right? So that's just another business problem that you're challenged with. And your ability to find a great team is also a very big indicator of how well you're going to execute, right? So when I hear that, I don't know what to say other than you're just not working hard enough, or maybe you're not the leader you think you are, right? Maybe you're just not cut out to be the leader to drive a business to success. Because if you're out there and you're trying to find people and you're not finding them, maybe they don't want to work for you. Maybe they don't think your idea is big enough. Yeah. Comment on, on the uh, competition, meaning just listing who your competitors are versus knowing who your competitors are, expecting the uh, investor to, to make those calls to the investors to ensure you, you know you're on the right track. If there are too many com competitors? Well, no, competitors. Companies will list their competitors. You always get a sheet. Here are my competitors X, Y, Z. They don't right. necessarily know who their competitors are just by listing them. Right. So go behind the scenes. What do you do in terms of competitors, calling those competitors, making sure that they, you know, they're, they're in the same space that they, and how they differ? Okay, so there's a huge difference in the whole conversation about the, not doing due diligence. So, so about six years ago, there was a new, new angel group that started in New York, a bunch of young people under 30. And they said, oh, we're different than you, the New York Angels. We don't do due diligence. We know. We know. It's a great company. And that's when I was quoted as saying, well, not doing due diligence is like unprotected sex. You don't know what you're getting, right? Um, so there's only so much time. Yeah, there's only so much time that an angel investor, we're not VCs, though many of my friends are. We are much more, by the way, we're much more collaborative than ever before. Because smart angel investors are setting up the finances of a quality term sheet and relationship to better position you for VC funding when you get there, right? But we can't do all the things we think we'd like to do in terms of following up and doing the due diligence like that, calling competitors and so on. But I did create the Future Angels of New York, which are some of the brightest MBA and finance students from Columbia, Harvard, uh, uh, NYU, uh, and Baruch. Um, so they come in and they help us make those calls and create a deal memo. So we'll follow up where we need to, uh, and we'll have as many of those meetings as we can. First discovery meetings, hmm, there's something there, and then we'll go into due diligence. But the average amount of hours that an angel investor actually spends time doing this is about seven. But at the New York Angels, we have sectors. So we have fashion, I'm wearing Tommy John's underwear, anybody wearing Tommy John's? It's great underwear. It's gonna be meteoric rise in success. We have finance. We've got people in the art world. We have people across a whole host of areas. So at least they can give us much faster input uh, and be smarter about whether or not it's a better investment or not a better investment. We do our best. But remember I told you, 95% of angel investors are amateurs. They don't have to make the money. If they lose it, no one's gonna lose their yachts. Everybody's gonna do fine, thank you. Um, but I do propose that everybody up their game including all angels. So when I travel the country talking to angel investors, I'm, I'm still surprised how many angel investors confuse angel investing with economic development. And at Columbia University a year ago, just to make one last really important point, I'm sorry for this, there was 300 students at the CEO Club, Columbia Entrepreneur Organization, it's called. And I started the presentation by asking everybody, are we being too nice to you? And everybody looked at me. I said, are we in our community? This startup community, this wild, shiny new toy community, are we being too nice to you as entrepreneurs? And the long silence, and the answer came back is yes. And we resent it. We've created this culture of coddling entrepreneurs. You're such a nice entrepreneur. Tell your mother we're so proud of you, right? And then we end up giving money, and, and you know what we call it? If it doesn't exit, before it exits, it's called philanthropy. And in most American countries, most American communities, they also call it economic development. They fill an incubator with a company and not one of them is investable. And it's so sad. So when we talk about the size of the money that we invest, it's, it makes me sick. Because so much of that money is going after bad businesses and bad ideas. And I'm not trying to sound rude, I'm trying to be realistic. We all have to up our game and be smarter about it. Because it's gotta rain for the angel. Because if it doesn't rain for the angel, the lawyers don't get paid. Right? The lawyers all want to get paid. They all want success opportunities. So, if that's the last question, thank you.
what every angel investor wants you to know by my good friend Brian Cohen. I urge you all to buy it, to read it. You'll be better prepared. Wanna, Thanks again. If you want to give me some quick pictures, please come on up.